All right, let's take a second and see if we can use this as an application and show you why that one mole equals 22.4 liters that we talked about in the last video. Let's take a gas law that you already know. Let's take PV equals NRT. Let's say that you had a gas at one atmosphere and a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvin, and you had 22.4 liters. Let's say you want to know how many moles that is, and you're going to work the problem. Well, first of all, you have two values for R. You can use 0 0.0821, which is atmospheres times liters over the mole times Kelvin, or 8.31 kilopascals times liters mole time Kelvin. You'll notice since this is in atmospheres, I want to use this number, 0 0.0821. So I'm just doing what we've done before. Let's say we solve for N. All right, so that means we're going to have to divide by the 0 0.0821, and we're also going to divide by the 273. Now you may be thinking, why would you take 273 because that's supposed to be 273.15. Well, I'm going to make a point here real quick. I could use the 0.15, but I'm going to leave it like this real quick. So I divide by these two. I'm going to grab my handy-dandy calculator. Take one atmosphere times 22.4 divided by 0.0821 equals and divided by 273. I want you to look carefully at what that answer is. Point, I'm going to hold it closer to the camera. Point 0.999. Now you'd probably agree with me that that answer is one. One what? Well, one mole would be the answer. Now look what we just proved. For any gas at STP, STP was one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. All I'm doing is plugging those numbers into the formula. There's my one atmospheres. There's 273 Kelvin. Okay? One mole, which is what the answer came out to, was equal to 22.4 liters. You'll notice you did not have to know which gas it was. It could have been nitrogen, hydrogen. So using PV equals NRT, we can prove that one mole of any gas at STP, that's the important part, got to be at STP. And those are the numbers we plugged in. Always comes out 22.4 liters. Always comes out 22.4 liters. So this is sort of the application of where that fits in. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. It doesn't matter. The mathematics show that you end up, doesn't matter what gas you get, one mole is always equal to that 22.4 liters every single time. Now, I could have put the X here and made this one mole and make it come out 22.4 liters, but either way, you get the same answer. Now, let's see how this applies to what we've done in the laboratory. Uh, do you remember the lab that we did in which we had a battery? I'm going to erase a little bit. Which we had a battery, and then we had um, these tubes that were full of liquid. Remember that? Let's see if we remember how this thing was set up. If you remember correctly, they were in a very large beaker, and it was under green liquid. Uh, we had made it green so that you could actually push it down to the bottom of that beaker so that you could actually see what was going on. So you had green liquid inside the tubes all the way up to the top, and then it started bubbling. Now remember, when it started bubbling, you were catching the bubbles up here in the top part of the tubes, and then the, the level of the liquid started going down. So you ended up having a level like this and a level like this. Oops. inside. So the levels were dropping as you were catching gas. Now I didn't say anything when we did the lab because it would have been too difficult to understand, but we were catching gases. And as we were catching gases, what you ended up doing is taking this tube and you took a splint and you took it off, you put the splint under it and it popped. And then in the other example, it was, that was pure hydrogen, so this one was hydrogen gas and this one was oxygen gas. We were basically taking water and we were splitting it into H2 plus O2. And so one tube caught the hydrogen, one tube caught the oxygen. 
And so you caught the hydrogen and you made it explode with a fire. And then this was the one where we tried to put the flaming, uh, the glowing splint inside and tried to get it to relight. And it never would relight because, do you remember why? The tubes were too wet. The gas was too wet. And I just sort of left it at that. Well, today we're going to talk about what happens when you catch a gas. Because if you're sitting in a room and you want to catch a pure gas, like hydrogen or oxygen, it would be very difficult. You can't just open a jar and catch a gas. So many times you're going to do a reaction and it's going to be under liquid, in this case usually water, and you're going to bubble it through the water and you're going to catch it. When you catch that gas, the thing that confused scientists for a long time is why it wasn't pure. Well, it goes back to the reason why this one wouldn't relight. When you bubble it through the water, the gases get wet. They have a little bit of wetness to them. And so they don't act exactly right. So let's see if we can fix that problem. So let's take this experiment out real quick. And let's see what we learned. Well, there was a guy by the name of Dalton. And he came up with what is called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. What that basically means is, if you had a balloon, for example, and you blew air into it, what gases are inside? Well, you know you blew carbon dioxide into it. There's going to be some nitrogen because you breathe it in and breathe it out. There's going to be some oxygen, just a little bit of helium from the normal air, and all kinds of other gases. Dalton said the total pressure, now notice how I wrote that, pressure total, the total pressure is going to be the pressure of all the gases inside pushing on the inside of the balloon. So basically what he said was this. The total pressure inside the balloon is going to be pressure one, pressure of one gas, pressure of another gas, pressure of another gas, gas so that you go on and on and on until you've used up all the gases. Now, if a balloon only had two pressures inside, then it would go P1 and P2. If it had five gases, then the total pressure would be P1 plus P2 plus P3, P4, and P5. The total pressure is equal to all of the gases inside the balloon. And I think that makes sense because all the gases are going to push on the outside of the balloon, keeping it in its round shape. So basically, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure says the total pressure is equal to all the gases that are inside. Now, using that information, if we have the battery again, and let's just take one of the tubes, okay? Well, we'll just put them both on there real quick. Let's see if we can make that work again. Just put them in the wrong, no. Just like that. If we have the tubes, what is actually happening inside, if this one was hydrogen, and let's say this was tube one, the total pressure of tube one is going to be the pressure of hydrogen gas, because that's what you're catching, plus the pressure of water. Why water? Because you bubbled it through water. Pressure tube, so that's tube one, tube two, total pressure, that's the oxygen tube. It was going to be the pressure of oxygen inside, plus also the pressure of hydrogen inside, uh, excuse me, water inside. So both pressures have pressure of water. Now it's just a little bit, but that little bit of pressure changes things. And so what they had to do is figure out, if you want to know how much pressure just comes from hydrogen, which is really what you're catching, and pressure just from oxygen, if you could somehow find a way to get that out of the equation, you'd have it. Well, if it's a plus sign, to get it out, you're going to, let's just go ahead and subtract the pressure of water, and you know, 